and welcome to our special show, Quarter Se Quarter Tak. I am Lata Venkatesh with me Anuj Singhal. Well, you would have guessed we are in the second week of April and the earnings season, the all-important fourth quarter earnings season is upon us. And uh, since the earnings season has been a disappointment over the last several quarters, uh, if I remember right, I think uh, practically Anuj for F514, F515, uh, we've had zero earnings growth. I think 3% earnings growth uh, uh, according to some people, uh, F515, depending on what they exclude. F516, again, we are, I think, 3 to 4% for the first nine months. So largely a disappointment. We will look forward to this at least as a troughing out. Yeah, I think that's the big hope. Uh, you know, after this quarter is over, make no mistake, we'll still end the, end the year with flat growth, maybe even minus one to maybe plus one kind of growth. Uh, but street is watching out for end of downgrade cycle. I think that's the most important part that has the downgrade cycle ended. And with positive monsoon, of course, you know, that will change a lot of things going forward. Will you now start to build in minor earnings upgrades? That's something that we need to discuss. And that's something, of course, that we'll find out uh, uh, with our guests as well, Lata. All right, uh, let's do that then. Introduce uh, two very important uh, watchers of earnings and numbers. Join us, uh, two heads of research, Rakesh Arora of Macquarie Capital Securities and Gautam Chaucharya of UBS Securities are joining us on this show with their expectations and their comments on earnings expectations. Well, uh, Anuj. Yeah, let's go across to our, uh, our guest then. Uh, uh, Rakesh, uh, you know, let, let me start with you then. Because I'm reading your report and uh, you believe that uh, this quarter, while uh, you know we may not see earnings growth, but it will show signs of underlying growth pick up. What do you mean by that? And what are you penciling in as we head into the earnings season? Okay, so, you know, the point we are trying to make... Okay, okay. Uh, we've lost that link. We'll try to repatch that. Uh, but uh, Gautam, uh, same question to you. Uh, Q4, not too many fireworks are expected, but could this be the start of the end of downgrade cycle? So Q4 specifically, the headline numbers uh, will look better than what we have seen over last three quarters. <coughs> uh, and also given the base of last year's 4Q, where we saw a decline in earnings in double digits, so just by that logic, the headline number should be more uh, uh, optimistic. Uh, so if you look at street forecast, it's around 7% earning growth for Nifty as a whole. Uh, but the question is, uh, as you rightly said in the beginning, what happens to the downgrade or upgrade cycle? And there again, the story is still not good from analyst expectations. So if I look at bottom-up uh, street uh, expectations for FY17, they're still expecting 90 to 20% growth for Nifty. Uh, which is far too optimistic in our view. Our top-down framework suggests more like a 10% earnings growth, uh, which will anyway be a recovery uh, compared to, say, a 2% earnings growth likely in FY16. Uh, but there is definitely some downgrade uh, left out there. Okay, some downgrade uh, left, uh, Gautam, but uh, uh, the moot point is, will the downgrades be more than the upgrades? So uh, again, there's always a, even last two years, <coughs> Uh, we have seen stock level upgrades or positive surprises. Uh, but when we move, move down from 20% earnings growth expectations to a realistic 10% earnings growth for next year, mm. uh, it will still be kind of a drag on the market. But having said that, what's also interesting is when we talk to investors uh, globally, specifically over the last two to three months, uh, their expectations is far more realistic than uh, sell side analyst expectations. So that's that's kind of a, a positive for, for the market. Okay. All right, Gautam, stay on with us. Uh, we'll uh, talk to Rakesh as well. But before we do that, uh, let's go across to Varinder, who joins in with a broad preview into what we can expect from earnings season this time. Varinder? Well, thank you so much. Uh, expectations of a good quarter this point of time, at least after many quarters, five to six quarters. So if you're watching out for the headline numbers for the BSE, you know, Sensex companies, uh, for the net income is ex expected to grow by nearly 3%. If you exclude commodities and banks, the net income could grow by nearly 10%. The good news is that even 3% growth is coming back after five quarters. Of course, it's on a low base, but as I said, you know, we'll take it as it comes because it's happening after many quarters. If you're watching for the EBITDA growth, again, EBITDA growth in that BSE 30 companies 
could be after four to five quarters. Even on the revenue front, you know, you could see nearly 7% growth in the companies. So that's what the hope is right now. You know, if you look at the screen, you will see, you know, that it's after five quarters, you know, we are seeing that kind of growth in terms of net income. Fourth quarter, which is the base year for the, for, uh, you know, the upcoming uh, result season, you know, the net income was down 11%. So you have to take that factor into cognizance. That's the number one important point. The number two important point is that the income is growing and that is also held by the change in index constituents. Remember in January, you know, you had important three changes coming in, um, you know, Bharti Infratel, Aurobindo Pharma, or these one uh, were uh, among new names which are included in the Nifty. And that, you know, were in favor of less cyclical and higher growth companies. And that is also helping the earnings this, this point of time. FY16 as a whole year, if you compare with FY15, there will be still degrowth of anywhere between 1 to 2%. Uh, FY17 is critical because that's what everyone is watching out for. What kind of expectations analysts are building up? You know, reading most of the reports, people believe that 12 to 15% growth is expected going ahead in FY17. So if you're looking out for Nifty, FY17, EPS, that is around 470 rupees. And for FY18, it's nearly 550, 550 rupees. So that is important point to focus on whether that growth sustains or not going ahead in FY17. Also, most of the analysts believe that the earning growth pickup should happen and will be visible from September 16 quarter onwards, which is after two quarters. But the markets are looking solid. The earnings expectations are good on a low base. So let's see how this pan going ahead. Okay, thanks for setting up the argument uh, for us, uh, Varinder. Uh, well, then that question to you, Gautam. Uh, this 10% earnings growth or 11% that you spoke about uh, uh, excluding some sectors, is that also only because of a low base? Low base and, and, and obviously some, some recovery or normalization in the economy, mm -hmm. uh, some, some recovery in terms or, or some normalization in terms of the nominal negative impact which you saw this year. Okay. So on one hand, you will have the nominal headwinds uh, going away in terms of WPI picking up in FI17. But on the other hand, you also remember that the EBITDA margin tailwind which you got in FI16 because of lower commodity prices will also dissipate in FI17. Mm. So net-net, that's where we end up with coming at, at a 10% uh, growth number next year, uh, which okay. will still be better than this year. Okay, 10% uh, doesn't look very encouraging, but we will take it with both hands if it is, uh, uh, you know, 0% and minus 1% uh, this year. Uh, Rakesh Arora, uh, the head of research at India Macquarie Capital Securities, has now joined us. Uh, Rakesh, uh, well, uh, uh, Varinder was just telling us that uh, we will get a fourth quarter earnings growth of about 10 percent, uh, 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 sorry, uh, about uh, 3 percent, but that will be largely because year ago the quarter was a dismal one with 11 percent contraction in earnings. Uh, what are you going with for this quarter? So clearly, you know, uh, two things have been weighing on earnings uh, pretty heavily uh, for the current quarter also. I mean, while last year the same quarter was weak, but this year also, you know, commodity prices have come down sharply. And number two is, you know, banks are seeing a huge, uh, you know, losses because of provisioning that they have to make uh, on asset quality review. So those two things, uh, you know, reported number may not really look that nice. But if you look at the underlying growth, uh, meaning if you remove banks and commodities and uh, so this growth in FI15 was around 4%. In the first nine months it's around 7% and in the fourth quarter it's going to be around 10%. So apart from banks and commodities there's already a recovery which is happening and you know I agree with uh, you know Gautam that uh, the underlying growth is around 10% but you know as uh, things improve um, on the front of commodities and banks from next year uh, most of the houses are forecasting more than 100% growth in these two sectors. So, you know, probably uh, I would tend to think that FI17 growth would be more like 14, 15% above the trend line, uh, uh, you know, rather than below it here. Okay, then uh, uh, Rakesh, uh, you know, the other thing that market would want to know is, or market participants would want to know is that what should be the the multiple given to this market because now we have the added news of uh, maybe a normal monsoon. Do you think that will change things a bit and going forward from market's point of view with the kind of numbers that you have for FY17 and 18, we might need to reassign slightly higher price earning multiple? Yeah, so see, uh, assuming a 15% earnings growth both for FY17 and FY18, uh, market is trading at around 14 times FY18. 
and uh, uh, you know historically 10 year average is around 14.8 so there's still some scope for market to go up uh, even without breaching the long term averages but i think what is more important apart from monsoon is going to be uh, the you know uh, budget session of parliament which is uh, starting from which is the second half of mm. budget session of parliament starting on 25th april if we can get bankruptcy bill and maybe you know some progress on gst markets can get easily related to 16 times uh, p multiple also mm. so i think it's more driven by reforms mm. than you know just the expectation of monsoon uh, i would say okay uh, well that point is taken multiple hasn't always depended on earnings well uh, gautam uh, what would be your stand out sectors in the fourth quarter what would you watch out for in terms of sectors I think the standout sector, in our view, would be pharma, uh, because of visibility on specific products across companies. Uh, so it should be a very strong quarter in terms of Y and Y earnings growth, and specifically in the context of what's been happening to that sector recently, uh, in terms of the negative uh, ish, shocks around FDA, etc. So that that sector stands out for us. Uh, then obviously for the market sentiment, uh, broad macro sentiment also, uh, what would uh, be relevant is uh, what banks do in terms of provisioning in the fourth quarter. and more importantly what is the guidance they give for fy17 in terms of whether they've completely cleaned up there's more more left on the table etc all right let's do one thing we'll take a break on that note but coming up we'll get down to individual sectors and individual stocks ekta batra will tell us what we can expect from the banks this quarter reema will tell us what the it sector report card is likely to look like and agam will tell us about the fmcg companies